So uh, some bells and whistles. This whole column here, uh, which is codes and context, which shows you with what we call our code stripes where the codes are. If you want to see more of your source file, you can toggle that on and off to your heart's content. You can, of course, change the fonts that the text is displayed in. You can move all the windows around to your heart's content and rearrange them. Uh, we have a series of you know, default layouts that you can pick from, from different options if you want your, your uh, uh, different layouts suit different people. Um, you can then, again, resize them and move them to your own heart's content. Uh, if I don't want the master code book visible, I can hide the master code book. Um, there are command key equivalents to apply codes. Um, so I can just hit, uh, uh, what is it, control, uh, 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 <clears throat> accent, excuse me, um, which we keep right over on the left-hand side of the keyboard as the equivalent of apply codes. Um, you can do drag and drop coding. Um, so if I have a chunk of text over here, um, we'll just pick an arbitrary chunk of text. I can come over here, drag a code over, drop it on there. Um, if I want to do drag and drop coding, drag and drop coding is a feature of 3.0 and above, not available in the older 2.8 version, but a lot of people find it really convenient um, to do drag and drop models. Also, if you think about, you know, trends in mobile devices, um, uh, on tablets or other kinds of devices in the not too distant future, uh, you know, you could have that as a finger gesture where you could touch on the code and drag it over and drop it onto your text to code a particular passage of text. Um, so we are thinking in terms of the future of interfaces um, being, you know, more interactive like that, more drag and drop or touch and swipe oriented interfaces. Um, and again, I can, I can keep building up codes. If I need to add another case, I can go to the Cases menu. Whenever you want to manipulate a case, it's on the Cases menu. I can go to different cases, create new cases, rename cases, delete cases, travel back and forth. If I'm working with my sources, that's under the Source menu. I can see a list of all my sources that I have open. Um, I can find information about those sources um, all under the Source menu. Um, and if I want to manipulate either individual codes or master codes, that's all under the codes menu. Uh, so pretty straightforward, you know, navigation through the menu bar. Um, with that said, let me bring up a slightly larger study and show you the next part, which is now that I've coded a bunch of material, um, uh, what are some of the things that I can start to do with it? So I'm going to go open up. No, I'm not going to save these changes. Um, you should always save your changes. Um, but I'm going to go open up this uh, pre-existing study. So here I have a larger series of codes. I've got eight cases. This is a very small sample study, so it's easy to demonstrate uh, different aspects of it. Um, once you have a good chunk of your material coded, uh, Hyper Research has a really important concept to understand. It's simple once you understand it and extremely powerful. Almost all the analysis and reporting that you will do in Hyper Research is based upon this concept of the currently selected cases and the currently selected codes, or more precisely, the currently filtered cases and the currently filtered codes. And now let me sort of show you what this means and why this concept gives a lot of power to the package. So I have here now eight cases. As I sort of cycle through them, you can see that there's a variable amount of codes on each case, right? Um, perhaps what I want to analyze is, for one reason or another, I really just want to look at the first three cases. Something about I saw in the coding strikes me as uh, important about them. I can go to this Filter Cases menu which I can get right here on the study window, or I can get to filter cases from the case menu, filter cases, right? Either way, 
We try to give people lots of different ways, whatever they like, they feel comfortable with to navigate uh, by name. And I'm going to say, I just want to see the first three cases. And to select those, I'm basically just holding down the control key um, or the command key on a Macintosh and clicking on these multiple entries. And I say select. And you'll see this is changed up here to say there's a case filter in effect. It's by name. And there are only three of eight cases being displayed. And now as I cycle through these, I only see cases one, two, and three, the ones that I selected. Right? And, and as I look at them, or as I now do reporting on them, any reports I run are only going to report on those currently selected cases. Further, I can filter by codes. So I can come down to the filter by codes, and it's saying on this one, I'm seeing all codes, and there's 11 out of 11 codes on this case, on this particular, you know, study number two, case two, uh, sorry, interview number two, case two, are being displayed, right? But I can come down here and also do, say, filter by name and say, well, I only want to look at uh, information that, about these people's sort of ideas on their career. I want to you know, see what they think about what their work role will be. So let's look at the uh, fabulous non-traditional job, uh, combining work and family. Um, you know, look at family before career to see if there's any conflicts with the job, whether they're making a high salary whether they've made a significant contribution, whether they left traditional fields for non-traditional fields, um, no financial problems may be work-related, may not be. Uh, non-traditional field uh, is what they're, they're, they're working in, um, perceive some discrimination on job, um, and that's, that's enough for now. There may be more, and I'll select those. <clears throat> Notice that my case filter has now changed to saying, um, I'm only viewing four out of 11 codes on this case. I'm filtering by name. If I go over to these other three cases, all three of them have been filtered by that same criteria. All right. Now if I go over to run a report, uh, which is under the reports menu, and I say new report, I can say I want to see, you know, the the... Uh, case name, code name, the type of information, code reference, source name, frequency, and the. Uh, let me just simplify it and turn all that off. All I want to see is the code name. Uh, I know what source it's in, but also the source name. Don't want to see the frequency, and I want to see what the underlying source material is in my report. And hit. Uh, we'll put it all on one page, and hit display. It asked me to uh, identify where my file is, click OK, and now I have material here. So I can see, OK, um, here's the actual coded source material for I am making a high salary. Uh, they say that they're 40 years old, they love their job, they're president of an advertising agency, so that's where the inference was for making a high salary, etc. Here's the code non-traditional job. So it's retrieved in my report. I'm just going to move the report window over to one side for a bit. It's retrieved in my report, literally, just again, the filtered codes on the filtered cases. Right? Very simple, straightforward way to understand it. But now I can go back and with that model of the filtered codes and filtered cases, do very powerful things. So. Um, if I go back for a second and say, give me all my cases and give me all my codes, so I turn up all filtering, I can now do things like filter cases by criteria, where I can start building expressions based upon the presence or absence of code. So I can say, I want to get just those cases where I have seen a issue where there is a conflict between work and family or a um, 
a conflict over taking a non-traditional role, right? Or um, let me add one more. Uh, find the one I'm looking for, leaves non-traditional traditional field, and I can start getting, I can start getting very complex because I can, for example, place parentheses around that expression, and I can find any of those but not where they have family before career. Now, I don't actually know whether this, because I just made this criteria up, whether it's going to return anything or not. I probably should have picked a, an example I was sure of. But it shows you you can build complex criteria to say, uh, and what you're saying here is, I want to find within all my source material, I just want to find those subjects where I'm seeing any of these three themes, but not this theme. Right? And you can build very complicated expressions in here. You can save those expressions so you don't have to recreate them each time and just load them back in when you want to perform that filter um, and apply it. And now it's filtered that. In this case, literally only one of my cases, case five, met that criteria that I just put in. Only one subject out of my eight subjects met that criteria. Um, but I can use that to create sets that I'm looking for I can further filter by codes and then go to my reports to do retrieval of that coded content to, to look at or analyze. Um, so having retrieved this one case, I could then come up here and, you know, again, do a new report, select my settings, uh, we'll do the hyperlinks, we'll include any source material associated with this, go back to display on a single page. Um, and click display and now I can go in and view the source material for this particular case to look through it. If I want to see any of it in context with that hyperlinks feature on, clicking on it actually takes you to that particular code reference within the source material from the hyperlinks. A very easy code and retrieve model.